वेलकम स्वागत है आपका दूरदर्शन केंद्र मुंबई के स्टूडियोज में आज की शाम हम लोग यहाँ जमा हुए हैं एक कार्यक्रम ऐसा है जिसे कि जिसकी कल्पना एक मैगजीन को देखकर की गई थी आ, कुछ दिनों पहले आई फाउंड इन अ मैगजीन की छः या सात या दस बारह महिलाओं के जो कि अपने अपने क्षेत्र में स्पेशली फाइनेंस के क्षेत्र में जिन्होंने बहुत बढ़ कर के काम किया है और नॉर्मली फाइनेंस के क्षेत्र में हम महिलाओं को उतना पाते भी नहीं थे तो ये सोचा गया कि वाई नॉट वी हैव अ प्रोग्राम एंड दैट इज हाउ वी इन्वाइटेड दैम एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट दे ऑल हैव मेड इट टूडे टू आर स्टूडियोज हमारे पास बहुत सारे स्कूल के बच्चे हैं बट ओनली गर्ल्स एंड देन आई हैव टूडेज होस्ट मिस्टर अनिल धारकर नाउ अनिल धारकर जी के बारे में ज़्यादा बताना इसलिए भी नहीं है बिकॉज वी ऑल नो इज अ पब्लिक फिगर इलिस्ट्रेटेड वीकली ऑफ इंडिया के एडिटर भी रह चुके हैं जो मैं जिस मैगजीन को मेरे हिसाब से विच हैड एक उसका स्टेटस होता था हम सभी पढ़ते थे एक जमाने में अब तो आजकल तो वो नहीं है और उसके अलावा अनिल जी हैज़ रिटन लॉट ऑफ बुक्स एंड हीज़ बिन अ लिटरेरी सर्कल सो मैं उनकी ज़्यादा तारीफ नहीं करना चाहता मैं उनको अब आमंत्रित करना चाहता हूँ ही शुड कम ऑन द स्टेज सो दैट आई कैन फेलिसिटेट हिम वेलकम टू डी डी के मुंबई सर दिस इज योर हॉट सीट यू कैन टेक दैट एंड देन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू इन्वाइट वन बाई वन श्योर एंड यू टॉक टू दैम फॉर टेन मिनट्स some question answers and also these uh, children who have come from school the girls especially they would also like to ask one or two questions so the floor is all yours thank I you very much i want to ask the girls are you happy to be here <laughs> yeah. so thank you very much anil ji i'll just go back and you take over and uh, mukesh i want to felicitate you ah thank you <laughs> because under his leadership doordarshan has started so many initiatives Sir, thank you so much and this is one of them he finds the right kind of people he honors them brings them to public notice and a wider notice and it's very good that you do that thank you so much the theme for today is saluting womanhood inspiring change and we have six ladies who have inspired change in many different ways i'll just mention their names and then they'll come here and have a little chat with me in no particular order vijay lakshmi ayer usha sangwan bala desh pande kalpana morkarya chitra ramkrishna and sunita sharma before we start I think there's a little AV that has been made and can we have that please Mrs Vijay Lakshmi R Iyer Starting her career with the Union Bank of India in 1975 she has a rich and varied exposure to branch banking having headed very large branches in Pune and Mumbai She was instrumental in setting up the risk management department in 2000 inter alia putting in place various risk policies developing risk measures and structuring the reporting framework Mrs Iyer assumed the role of chairperson and managing director of the Bank of India in November 2012 and has powered the bank ahead in various areas of business and control The bank has seen quantum growth in business during her tenure and is a leader in the PSU banking space. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairperson and managing director Bank of India, Mrs Vijay Lakshmi R Iyer. What amazes me is that, given this wonderful roster of achievement that we have in the studio, why is it that women seem to have done so well in this sector, banking sector, financial sector? Because the conventional wisdom is that uh, when it comes to numbers and mathematics, boys are better, girls are weak, <laughs> and I think all six of you have proven that wrong. it's really very heartening to know that uh, at this point of time there are more women leaders in the banking industry at this 
At the same time, I would also like to recognize the other leaders in the corporate sector. I would, what comes to my mind is two or three qualities why women are more successful or they are more preferred or they make success in the banking sector. One is banking is a service organization and women excel in that. And number two, uh, banking calls for decision, <coughs> tough decision amongst complexities. And uh, I feel here again, a uh, lady or a woman is able to handle that well. Very often, other than the metropolitan cities, we have joint families and we have the lady has to look after the first generation, second generation, or even the third generation. So she's able to adapt and adjust to the various circumstances, understand the situation and accordingly manage it. That is another quality. And third, I feel women is our better team makers. And uh, banking being a service industry, actually the key to success is harnessing the capability of the human workforce. And here again, I feel women are better than men. <laughs> I tend to disagree with you when you said that uh, women are a little weaker in numbers than the male counterparts. That is a conventional one. That is a conventional one. Yes. Let us recall Shakuntala Devi. She was icon. Okay. And all of us know what she did in the field of mathematics. Right. I think we should put to rest that question here. And uh, apart from the qualities which I said uh, women has, uh, I feel uh, she also has a very holistic approach, more coordinated approach in handling any situation. I think that makes perhaps a women better in a banking sector than any other corporate sector. You know, now it is accepted a fact that women are in leadership positions, especially in the banking sector, financial sector. But when you started off, I'm sure it was not a common practice. And therefore, did you meet any resistance from your colleagues, from other people? I concede with you, when I started my banking career in 1975, there were not uh, any women leaders at the top helm of the affairs. Uh, as per leading market research, of course, uh, glass ceiling is a, a reality. But let me be frank with all of you. During my career path, I did not face any such uh, uh, glass ceiling. It was fairly a smooth one. Of course, uh, I did uh, my hard work, focus, and determined uh, effort from my side. I did get come across many of the good opportunities, right mentors. But I should honestly tell you that as a woman, I always nurtured a feeling that I must demonstrate that women can become good managers, good executives, good leaders. In fact, perhaps that feeling led me to a passion for challenge and also for a sense of purpose. Do any of you girls want to ask a question? Now most of the banks, they are having, uh, providing home loans beneficial for women. So do you think that this will uh, actually empower women to use it? Yeah, home loan is one of the product which a bank provides. And for the lady members, we give little concession in the rate of interest. What would be more empowering the women is the education which we need to take it to the rural and semi-urban areas and the health awareness and also the need that they should participate in the planning and the development process of their family, their community, and then they should have the right to demand for better facility for sanitation, drinking water, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, in fact, since all of us are very fortunate to be in metropolitan Bombay, perhaps we are not much aware of the difficulties being faced by the rural folks. So the life there is very much different more difficult and we have to travel a long distance. Would you in conclusion like to give a message to the girls here and the audience beyond? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, see, life is a journey and in this journey of life which we travel, it is we who make our destiny. That's what I want all of you to know that. And uh, all of you would agree that God has written a separate script for every single individual in this world and we don't know what is that script for us. So you will find ups and downs in your life. You must face the adversities head on. You should not get disheartened when you face the lows in your life. Though the going may be tough, you may feel very tough during those times, such times also will pass on. Have a faith in Lot 
and always move forward. Vijayalakshmi, I have for being yes. here. Thank you. Wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much. Our next achiever is Usha Sangwan. She joined the Life Insurance Corporation of India as a direct recruit officer in 1981. She has worked in almost all core areas of life insurance. She has also started technology-based direct marketing channel of LIC, which is the fastest growing and highly productive channel of the corporation. Mrs. Sangwan is the board member of Access Bank, chairman and director of LIC HFL Care Homes, director on board of LIC Singapore Private Limited, and member of the governing council of National Insurance Academy Pune. She has also been a board member of IFCI. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first woman managing director of Life Insurance Corporation of India, Mrs. Usha Sangwan. It must be a singular honour to be the first ever woman to head LIC. Yeah. Uh, LIC is a mammoth organisation as we all know mm. and for a woman to head it uh, is an incredible feat. Thank you so much. It's a matter of great honour and pride for me also uh, to be the first woman managing director of Life Insurance Corporation of India which is the largest insurer most probably in the world serving 30 crore policy holders. Uh, is it the largest in the world? Uh, in matter of servicing the customers, 30 crore customers, okay. it's like a nation. Only three nations have more population than this. Right. Yeah. So you're the leader of a nation? Uh, LIC is the leader <laughs> in insurance world, I would say that. What do you think is the secret of your success? I think it's uh, basically commitment to your work. Not only commitment to your work, it's, uh, you, should, uh, you should be able to enjoy your work. You, you should get so much immersed in your work. You understand the purpose of what you are doing, involve your team, enjoy your work. I think that's the secret. But you could say that even a man enjoys his work. Men are also successful. <laughs> right. That is very true. Yeah. Yes, but there must be some special qualities which uh, distinguish a woman. One question which uh, often arises in my mind is that to succeed in, in uh, the corporate world, yeah. does a woman have to be more like a man or can she retain a feminine qualities? I would say that uh, to be successful, you have to be yourself. Whether man or woman, you have to be yourself. If you try to be somebody else, it may not work. You have to be authentic, you have to be genuine. And it depends on your role, what role you are supposed to perform. In certain positions, it's, uh, it demands to be assertive, mm -hmm. more, uh, more aggressive, then you may call it man-like qualities. In certain positions where you have to take your people along with, you have to share your vision, you have to be the leader, uh, women-like qualities do help, femininity does help. So it depends on your role, position, challenges and uh, the qualities required for that role position. I think the, f uh, the fact that women have naturally to be multitaskers, yeah. that must obviously help in your job also. Yeah, to, to a great extent, I think the way we are brought up, the way women are brought up, and that may not be so with the next generation, but at least with our generation, the way we were brought up, we were told that you have to adjust in the uh, next family. So that adaptability comes very naturally. And then uh, definitely you have to look after your children, your family, your in-laws. Uh, multitasking comes very naturally to women. You must have interacted a lot with uh, your Western counterparts, mm -hmm. women counterparts. Do you see any essential difference between an Indian woman's approach and a Western woman's approach? I think basic difference in Indian women approach is that we are still very family oriented. Keeping an eye on your career, yes, we are getting, getting there. But we are not dealing from our families and that's a great institution for India as such. Because the, I think we must value that and we must try to uh, uphold that family institution. Uh, even if you are working, there's no substitute for, uh, uh, for your family which gives you the ultimate support. So that is the biggest difference between Western counterparts. They may be 
only focused on their career. But but we'll take care of children, we'll take care of entire family and do well on career front also. Suppose in your mm. career you had reached a particular stage yeah. where you had to choose between career and family. Mm -hmm. Obviously you haven't had to do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but suppose you mm -hmm. had to, what would you have done? Uh, I'm happy you asked because many people have asked that question. Uh -huh. Not only asked, they have told also that you choose between career and family. You know, uh, with good intentions of course. That yeah. Thinking that it's not possible for a woman to manage both the fronts and manage them very well. But uh, the more I was told, more my resolve got stronger that I can manage both. And believe me, my friends, we can do it very well. Uh, it's, uh, you can manage career and uh, I, I started thinking that why not? Men can have ca career as well as uh, family, why not women? Well, so men take the easy way, they leave it to the wife. So, so wife can also delegate to husband. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you done that? I think it's very important. Once you are uh, on a career path, you have to be very sure how you are leading your family. You have to take the support of your children, your husband. Uh, in management, we call it delegation. At home, I call it empowerment of my children and husband. So w w we all work together. I, I think uh, we should not. Many times women feel guilty that we are not giving enough time to children. Uh, but I think it makes them much more independent. They are able to take their own decisions. Right. We as Indian mothers, we feel that they are dependent on us. I think today's generation, they, they are very wise, ma very mature at right early stages to take their decisions. But we should be available when they need us. That's more important. And uh, they should be free to talk about their issues to mothers whenever they want. Right. I think the girls here will be very happy to have a mother like this. <laughs> <laughs> who won't uh -huh. nag them to do their homework. Uh, but, uh, but I'm a great friend and my children are my best critics. Any so questions from you? The question which I want to ask you is related to the present scenario of the world. Mm -hmm. Nowadays I've observed that most of the parents want their children to take up science stream and become either engineer or doctor. Mm -hmm. But I would like to ask you to give a message to the pa parents so that they realize that girls mm -hmm. can not only be good doctors but they can excel in other fields also. Uh, I, I will definitely like to share with parents, I firmly believe every child is born with huge potential and you, you don't know in which area he will excel. So we should not try to live our lives through our children. Most of the time parents feel that I wanted to be a great doctor or I am a great doctor, my child should follow that path. We should allow the child to blossom on his or her own definitely and children have invariably tendency to make their parents feel proud of their achievements. Well, thank you so much, Usha Sangwa. <laughs> Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Kalpana Morparia. Ms. Kalpana Morparia is the Chief Executive Officer of South Asia and India Operations at J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. Prior to this, she was Managing Director of ICICI Bank Limited. She has experienced and led every aspect of its operations at different levels. Ms. Morparia serves as the chairperson of J.P. Morgan Asset Management India Private Limited and vice chairperson of ICICI Prudential Asset Management Company Limited. She has been the executive director of ICICI Limited since the 1st of May 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Executive Officer, South Asia and India, J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, Ms. Kalpana Morparia. Fortune magazine called you put you in the list of 50 most powerful business women in the world. Now, leading from that, I have to ask this question. Wh what is it about Indian women and the financial sector? So, I think there are two ways in which Indian women are relatively blessed compared to our Western counterparts. One is we have a phenomenal family support system. Whether it's parents, in-laws, they uproot themselves to be with daughter or daughter-in-law in the time of need. And we have to face it just given, you know, our per capita incomes or whatever, we also have a great support system. So I think compared to our Western counterparts, we are better placed. 
and get support I, system in the sense of domestic servants and stuff. Exactly, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I also feel that despite some of the bad incidents that we were talking about, women and you know, there's been a lot of that, a lot of those incidents and a lot of that in the media. At heart, there is enormous respect. I think that the male folks have for women. I mean, you know, if you look at our goddesses that we worship, the entire value system to the mother. Uh, well, so the, the goddess of knowledge is the uh, goddess so of knowledge, the goddess, goddess of, of wealth, wealth. Yes. <laughs> uh, Shakti. Yes. And so I actually, in my entire career, and I come close to 40 years of uh, working career in my life, I've not once felt discriminated against because I was a woman. Not once? Not once. At college? Not in school, not in college, not in my entire working career. I mean, I think women are blessed because we tend to dress more colorfully than you men do. Uh, you know, so uh, I think we are also relatively more frank than men are. So I think I'm blessed to be a woman. Uh, as Indians, as you know, we always say, what is it in my future uh, lifetime I'd want? I'd want to be an Indian and want to be a woman. I'd probably want to be a banker. But in school, in, sc in school, uh, you were not bullied? Does that mean you were very tough yourself or what? Uh, how, how? No, I wasn't bullied in school, but I must admit to you that unlike a lot of successful women here today and that we see here in India, I actually was never very keen on me being a career woman. My sole purpose in life when I was in school was to complete school education, get married and have lots of children. <laughs> But uh, my mother willed otherwise. She was very keen that her daughters become economically independent before they even pursued marriage. So I am what I am today really thanks to her ambition for her daughter rather than any particular drive that I had. Well, that's very strange considering what you've achieved, that you didn't plan a career at all. That's so I was blessed to have a mother yeah. who really pushed me every way. And then I was very blessed to have a boss, particularly in Mr. Kamath, who saw a potential in me that went beyond any capability that I thought I had. Is there a message you would like to give to the young, the, girls, the, here. young girls here and the audience beyond, which is the television yeah. audience? So particularly to all the women out there, yeah. young girls, young ladies, women my age, I think sometimes we make too much of who we are as a gender. And I think we should put that aside. If you have a goal, you have a vision, you have a dream, nothing is impossible. My favorite saying is, articulate your dream, make a commitment you're going to achieve that goal, the whole universe will conspire to make it happen. Well. <laughs> Let's get some questions. What will be the India that you see for women in the next 25, 30 years? You know, I'm actually very excited about the potential for all of you. Anytime I interact with a young audience, I always tell them that I would trade everything that I have achieved, including what I have in my bank account, to being as young as you are. <laughs> because there is a phenomenal opportunity that no other country today stands on the cusp of the opportunity that we do because of the demographics that we have, where we have so many young Indians, because India is such a vibrant and diverse society, the mix that we have of our GDP, etc. So whether you're a man or a woman, if you're a woman, you're, as I said, particularly privileged, but I think it's, it's just phenomenal. Thank you. I would like to ask, in today's 21st century, how can we make women self-motivated? So not just 21st century, I think in any century you want a very self-motivated woman. And I think actually women are, because of the multitasking that we do, you know, uh, they, they have to be self-motivated. They, they are blessed with this unique privilege of bearing a child and rearing a child. And I think that in itself is a huge motivation. So I don't think you need to particularly work on it. Let's all of us reaffirm to ourselves that we are great, greatly motivated. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Kalpana Maswariya. Thank Pleasure. you so much.
biography of Sunita Sharma. Mrs. Sunita Sharma rose to be the first woman to head LIC Housing Finance Limited, the country's second largest mortgage lender, since it was set up more than two decades ago. She has the responsibility of expanding business, ensuring growth with profitability, and guiding its bid to become a bank, assuming its license application is approved by the Reserve Bank of India, and regional manager, estates and office services, where she played a key role in LIC acquiring property worth more than 2,000 crore rupees. A team player with expertise in marketing, personnel, finance and accounts, HR, estates and risk management and equity research. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, LIC HFL, Mrs. Sunita Sharma. audio visual you would describe the team player yes. you consider that one of your important qualities yes i do i i feel that it's my the yeah it's my uh, I, it's my feeling and i feel that uh, without teams leaders cannot perform it is the team which performs and leaders normally get the names but basically team needs to be inspired and uh, only with the uh, teams uh, we are able to show any performance and go further but a leader, uh, every team needs to have a leader, right? Yeah. Uh, without that, the team will just flounder. Now, how does the leader assert herself or himself without getting obnoxious about it? Yeah, I feel the basic um, uh, thing to do for a leader is to raise the aspiration levels of its people. Whosoever are working with us, if the aspiration levels of those people are raised uh, by discussing with them, by showing them the way, uh, the things get done. Most of the time, the people, the team, um, uh, they uh, go around the uh, vision shown by the leader and they are able to perform and the teams do wonderfully well. And in, if you are forming a team, would you give a preference to women or to men or is it kind of equal? I feel the competence is gender neutral. It doesn't matter if somebody is a woman or a man. It depends on the competence of the person. Right. And uh, in a team, I would like to always have various kinds of people. I don't want same kind of persons because in teams, we need to celebrate differences. Different kind of people will perform different kind of tasks. And that's how the whole team is completed. That's how it makes a whole. So you're looking for different skills. Yes. Right? Yes. Now. Do you think a woman leader acts differently from a man leader in the sense that perhaps a woman takes more interest in, is more empathetic, perhaps takes more interest in the family life, personal life, talks to the team in a different way? Yeah, woman has uh, more sensitivity towards people as compared to men probably. But what dif differentiates women from uh, the men is that uh, they're their prudence, their pragmatic approach, and their solution-centric approach. That is what differentiates women from men. A solution-centric. <laughs> Did you ever feel uh, that there was a glass ceiling which you had to break? Never ever. Right from the day one when we joined the organization, when we were small, I mean, junior officers, whatever we did, the top management would, uh, I mean, would appreciate that, recognize that, you know. It kept on inspiring us, motivating us. We kept on doing more and more and more. And how the journey passed, I really don't know. I feel as if I joined LIC yesterday. Wow. And I'm still the first chairman of LIC, I remember him, how he gave me some award, I still remember that. It feels like yesterday. So the, how the journey passed, I really don't know. It has been just great, exhilarating, enjoying, enjoy, full of enjoyment. Is there a message you would like to give to the girls who are here and the TV audience? Yeah, I would like to say that to all these girls that you don't um, stop yourself, dream big. Because there are opportunities around there, you know, especially in this country there are great opportunities. You need to dream big, whatever you will dream it will come true. So don't, don't ever stop yourself. Can I invite questions? Uh, what, according to you, is the most important virtue that a woman should have? Believe in yourself. 
this is the most important thing then be prepared for doing hard work because when you are going out in this world people will not give you any concessions you should be prepared to do your best and do not shy away from any kind of hard work can women be made financially independent uh, yes i think uh, women can always be made financially independent in fact today not only today i mean for centuries in this country women have been actually financially independent in the sense they have been earning even for men only thing is they did not keep that money for themselves they spent all that money for the families what can be done is we can educate the women that some part of that money can be kept for themselves also for women already in this country are financially independent but all of you can what you can do is you can study and also um, you know take this message around to all the women that they should always keep something for themselves so that they are financially independent thank you so much thank you now our next guest is chitra ramkrishna ms chitra ramkrishna is the managing director and chief executive officer of the national stock exchange part of a hand picked leadership team created in 1994 to set up the national stock exchange in less than 2 decades she has overcome strong headwinds from various quarters to create a world class and completely transparent market institution ms chitra was recently selected as woman of the year by Forbes magazine and is also ranked 17th in the top list of global women business leaders by Fortune magazine USA she has also been featured in the list of top 30 women achievers by business today for the last four successive years ladies and gentlemen please welcome the managing director and chief executive officer of the national stock exchange Ms Chitra Ramkrishna You are part of the small team that set up the National Stock Exchange. There must have been a huge challenge. Perhaps one of the most exciting opportunities that I've had in my career. and uh, as i always say 20 years down the road it continues to give me that same sense of excitement and challenge that it gave me on day 1 right how is it that when nse was set up they decided on a woman and not on a man i started my career with uh, idbi which was a development bank and uh, in idbi in those days because it was one of the large public institutions you always had opportunities to be part of different projects and you know different things that got initiated at uh, the national level or at a bank level so when these opportunities came up it was really up to people to sort of raise their hand and say you know can i be part of it and uh, that's really the way nse happened that they were looking for a set of people who were sort of okay to work on a project for a few months or years and um, i was very keen to be part of that team so i raised my hand and i was lucky to get in right now you've been described as an institution builder uh, do you see yourself as that it's a big label to answer that question if we just look back on how my career has progressed perhaps that will give us a clue uh, as i said my first job was the idbi and uh, the reason i picked idbi at that point i was just out of chartered accountancy and clearly you know when you finish your chartered accountancy you have several opportunities come your way i was keen to be part of something that gave me an opportunity to do to do large things to do things that had large public impact and but when you became a ca you could have set up your own company or you could have joined a, a firm of chartered accountants that's right. you didn't take that path that's right so which is which is what uh, you know uh, perhaps was my thinking that i wanted to be part of something large yeah. something which had large public impact and i felt that i could not do that if i was just doing my own practice or i was with maybe a private sector at that point of time and i felt if i join a big development institution like this i'll get a chance to see so many things 
you know, fertilizer projects, construction projects, large bridges, what have you. And that was my thought process when I took up the IDBI job. No, but and wasn't there a thought in your mind that you go, uh, go to a big institution, you can be a small fish in a big pond, or you go to a small institution and you can become a big fish in a small pond? Yeah. That never crossed your mind? It never crossed my mind. <laughs> it, it always looked like if you're part of something public and right. uh, you, know, you get a chance to see so many things uh, in terms of public impact projects, you'll learn a lot and you'll probably have a chance to contribute. And uh, so the first few years were spent that way. And uh, then, uh, as I learned, it was actually much better than what I imagined when I uh, decided to get in. After I got in, I realized that when, you, when you're in a large uh, public sector institution like that, you get a chance to be part of so many creative new ideas that government policy or the you know, development financial institution wants to do. And so you get a chance to do different things without the need to change jobs. And uh, the first opportunity that came my way at that point was the SEBI was being conceived, conceptualized. So again, you know, in an institution like that, they ask you, do you want to be part of a team like that? So I got a chance to be part of that team. And right. it is very unlikely that I would have ever had a chance to do something as large or conceptual as that if I had been anywhere else. And uh, likewise, then the NSC idea came in and I was keen to be part of that team. I can't say I imagined at that time that NSC would be this large or that it would have this impact, but it certainly looked like a game changer. It certainly looked like a great idea and a lot to learn and perhaps something to contribute. I think you're being excessively modest because it NSC didn't accidentally become large. It was made to grow large, and you had a role to play in that. Let's put it this way. But there are a lot of good ideas always you know, in life as we go ahead. Yeah. Some click, some don't. And some of the good ideas that click are because, of course, the execution is good, the visioning is good, and all that, but it's also because the time is right. And I Being think at the right place at the right time? Yes. It was about an idea that had arrived. Right. And therefore, I think NSC got a chance to be that kind of a game changer that it turned out to be. Is there a message you would like to give to the girls here and the audience beyond? I think the, perhaps the one learning and which I can share from my own experiences is that I, we should never limit ourselves to say this or that. It's always possible to do this and that. And if our drive is strong enough, we will eventually get there. So we're not in this short-term race. It's not about reaching a 100-meter goal post, but we stay focused on leading a fulfilled life on all aspects. Because many times in our uh, organizations, we find that women and sp you know, girls spend, invest a lot of time in educating themselves, but are not prepared to take those decisions when they come to the crossroads and they sacrifice their careers, whether short term or long term. And I think if we are able to plan this and have a commitment early on in life, then we can tide over these crossroads with the right support systems. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's we'll get some questions from. My question to you is, as a woman, what change would you like to see in the society? As a woman, the first duty we have to ourselves is to lead fulfilled lives. As a woman, we must help more women to become productive and realize their goals. Uh, usually children with employed parents have complained that they don't get enough time to spend with their parents. So any suggestion for this? No, it's really not about the quantity of time that each one gets. You know, I think as somebody earlier, uh, uh, one of my co-panelists said, maybe more time will also be a nag on the children. <laughs> but uh, end of the day, I think it's up to the parents to really balance the amount of time that they have for their jobs and the family. And more often than not, I think that optimal kind of time spent is arrived at within the family. The children are also very supportive. The families also try to do the best that they can 
in the time that they have. Always when there's a scarcity, I think you try to do the best in the time available, right? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Well, thank you so much, Chitra. We have Bala Deshpande. Ms. Bala Deshpande, having worked with leading multinational organizations such as Best Foods, Cadbury's and ICI, she used her operational experience to identify opportunities for investment and play a strategic role in shaping the future of investee companies. Four and a half years ago, she joined as Senior Managing Director of New Enterprise Associates India Private Limited, NEA, based out of its Mumbai office and responsible for creating and building the NEA India platform. Under her leadership, NEA has invested $250 million in India across nine companies. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Managing Director of New Enterprise Associates India Private Limited, Ms. Bala Deshpande. NEA, I believe, is a 33-year-old company right. uh, with huge assets. And when they started their operations in India, they appointed you as head. Right. Do you know why? When I started my career, I was given 39 portfolio companies to manage. I inherited them and I had to make a return out of them. I think th that experience was invaluable. And I really uh, appreciate the firm ICICI and uh, and, and uh, my ex-boss for giving me that opportunity, Renuka, who also happens to be a woman. So I, I think NEA chose me. So you had that experience which Absolutely. NEA yeah. found useful. That's right. Now when you choose these companies, uh, you've invested $250 million in India. How, how do you choose these companies? Is, is there a kind of a preconceived notion or you're looking for new things? Or? Uh, you know, the thing about venture capitalism is about uh, your belief, your perspective, your idea of what is emerging India going to need because it is about making returns. The, my sole responsibility is not about just investing money but it is to invest wisely and deliver returns to our investors who are our limited partners in our fund. You are not a philanthropist. Yes, we are not a philanthropist. Yes. But there is a, there is a, like I said, it's a very personal business. I truly believe that the sectors you choose, the kind of entrepreneurs you choose, the kind of uh, uh, business models that you decide will, will make it big is a very personal uh, uh, belief system which is, comes out of experience. When so you say personal, then are you saying it is not an objective thing, it is a subjective thing? Uh, it is, okay, let me, uh, let me clarify that. What I meant by that is that it, if you were to look at it is that if, so for example, everybody would say if you ask this question to any VC that healthcare is a great opportunity to invest in today. India has uh, very poor infrastructure services in healthcare. We are underpenetrated on everything, whether it's beds, whether you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the rational factors underlying why healthcare is a great sector is very rational, very objective. Mm -hmm. And you would obviously say that I will pay a certain price to a, for, or uh, I'll value a certain com the company in a certain way. So all that is extremely objective. But the call that you are taking, which is subjective, is related to the future. So the assumptions that you're making with related to what is going to be a winning bet is fairly subjective because it is uh, dealing with the future. And also the, the people you're dealing with, the company you, who you're going to invest in. Absolutely. You're making subjective judgments. Absolutely. So, you know, the... 50% uh, of our decision is based on who the entrepreneur is. So you're saying uh, women's intuition helps? But I think it is, it is about instincts more than instu intuition or experience-based intuition. And I think um, with, with related to people, I think the, women, the way women deal with entrepreneurs, I think is special. I've seen that, you know, the, the kind of ability mm -hmm. to read the person across the table, what, they're, what signs, what they're not saying, what, uh, what they're saying between the lines is also very, very important. And I think women do that well. Okay. Do any of you girls want to ask a question? In your career, did you ever face any difficulties because uh, being a woman? Actually, no. I must, 
I must say this, and I and I really think that there have been wonderful men behind me, starting with my father who made me do an MBA because I was running wild, and my husband who stayed put in one organization, gave up lots of jobs because uh, I because uh, I would have to move or I have to give up my job if he moved, and colleagues, male colleagues, I think I have had wonderful support from them. And there are people who have dropped me home after working at three o'clock in the night. So I think there has been, I've been lucky probably, but I really uh, thank uh, all my male colleagues and, uh, and uh, the male members of my family for the, all the support that I've had. But I think I would be an exception. So to your point, yes, there would be enough women who have gone through challenges, and, uh, but not me. My question to you is, as you see today, um, a lot of girls, young girls, face a lot of abuse and a lot of wrong action are taken against them. Uh, what would be your message to the men and the girls of my age and say younger to me? Um, a very, very pertinent question uh, and I really feel very strongly about what we are seeing and, and I really feel strongly because I have traveled to the interiors of this country in my various jobs and I never even thought twice about it. But today, I think putting safety ahead of uh, uh, everything else is very important, given what is happening in our country. I truly think that you, you should make it a point to think twice before you do anything foolish. I have driven home personally at 3 o'clock in the night in long, empty roads. I never thought about it. But India has changed today, an unfortunate change, I would say. So please put safety ahead. And the message that I would like to give to the males and especially uh, the parents is that I think, I think somewhere all uh, the way women, girls are treated, women are treated starts at home. I think the values that are given to you by your parents about how you treat another woman or a girl is really starts at home. And I really wish that we do something to make sure that we inculcate this sense of, of uh, correct attitude to women starting very young. Thank you, Baila Deshpa. I think the message that has come through is that if you follow your passion and follow your, the dictates of your heart, there is nothing that you cannot do. And the six wonderful women who are here today have shown in their careers that this is very much possible. Thank you.